Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Jing. For today's Tech Talk, I'm going to talk about database index, covering the three questions. What is database index? Does index make my query faster? If yes, how? And how to create database indexes? To answer the first question, let's think about a book and uh, how we find any topic. Probably, instead of flipping through all the pages, you would go to the index of the book, and uh, it will tell you the exact pages where you can find the topic. Book index would contain the page number, same way the database index contains a pointer to the row where it contains the value that you are searching for. By definition, data index is a data structure that improves the speed of data retrieval operation. In, serv in SQL Server, indexes are organized as features as we know, which are fully dynamic. It needs additional writes and a storage uh, space to maintain the index. It can be created by default or explicitly. You can create more than one index on a table, and also you can create an index on more than one columns. Actually, the concept of database index is not that advanced for us. We've already been working with it for a while. This code is from the SQL workshop. When we run the IMDB database with the command DOS schema, we can see the set of indexes of the database. And with the command DOS schema space table name, we're going to see the schema of the table as well as indexes. Also, if you check the structure of a table from Postco, the indexes are also included. From the screenshot of my table order item structure, we can see that it has a primary key index on ID of column and a unique index on product ID and order ID. Now you may wonder what they are and how many types of index there are. Well, all kinds of index can be divided into two types, clustered index and a non-clustered index. A clustered index contains the key value and the pointer to the data rows, including all the columns in the table, while a non-clustered index contains the key value and the pointer to the data in the clustered index, or the heap, which means a table with no clustered index. The data rows of the table are in order based on the clustered index key so that only one clustered index is allowed for one table. A non-clustered index does not affect, it, affect the ordering and the storing of the data, so that one table could have more than one non-clustered indexes. And while, we, while creating a primary key, a clustered index is created if there is no clustered index exists. And while creating a unique constraint, a non-clustered index is created by default. That's why in the previous example, the order item table has a primary key index and a unique index, which I did not build them manually. We've already known that SQL Server database in index uses a B tree. How does it look like specifically? This image shows the clustered index structure. The topmost node is the tree, uh, of the tree is called the root node. The bottom level of the nodes is called leaf nodes. And the index level between the root, the root and the leaf nodes is called an intermediate level. The leaf nodes contain the data pages of the table in the case of a cluster index. This is a non-clustered index structure, which looks quite similar to the clustered index structure. But the leaf nodes contain the data pages of heap or clustered index. OK, knowing what the database index is, let's move to the second question. Does index make my query faster? To answer this question, we need to have an idea of how the tables are going to be accessed. For example, if we want to find users whose first name is Joe, without indexes, the, tata the database engine will go through the whole table row by row. Um, what if we have a class? a non-clustered index on the first name and a clustered index on ID. We search from the index on the first name and we'll find Joe and the pointers to its ID. And then with the ID, we, we search Joe's ID through the clustered index on ID. We can fetch the raw data of Joe. Actually, we don't need to build indexes if the table is as small as this example. But 
If we populate millions of records into the table, running the query with indexes would reduce the number of data cubes that the database engine has to check, and uh, probably it would speed up the query. In practice, we've already used a similar index. During the uh, SQL workshop, we ran a query to list all the actors that have worked with Callum Bacon in drama movies, with indexes on first name and last name, of all the table of the table actors, the runtime is about one second. So what if we drop the two indexes? We'll see. We drop the indexes, and then now it's taking longer than nine seconds to run the exactly same query. That's a huge difference. It seems that the indexes work pretty well here. So let's think about the third question: how to create indexes. If we want to create indexes manually, here is the syntax for SQL Server. It's so easy, and it's not to create, it's not hard to create indexes on even every column. However, please note, there are downfalls to having too many indexes. It takes up space to store, and the, the more indexes, the more overhead is incurred as the table is authored. When rows are inserted or deleted, all the indexes on the table must be updated. So you must weigh the performance benefits of indexes for queries against the performance overhead of updates. For example, if a table is primarily read-only, you might use more indexes. But if a table is heavily updated, you might use fewer indexes. So the, I guess the real question would be how to create appropriate and useful indexes. In other words, which columns should I create an indexes on? Apparently, I need to estimate the frequency and the importance of each query and select the column which is queried most frequently. Also, if I can also consider creating indexes on columns which are contained in where or order by, group by clause. When it comes to join condition, it's always ideal to create an index on foreign key. In this way, it could optimize the performance when accessing and enforcing referential constraints. In addition, most database sy systems would require that unique indexes be created when the unique constraints or primary key constraints exist. OK, now I have answers for the three questions. I've, and I've come up with some further questions. Do we really want the primary key as a clustered index? Does indexing always make my query faster? And why do we use B tree data structure, not hash table? If you are interested, you can think about them. And also, here are some links and for further reading. I hope you enjoy, you will enjoy indexing and enjoy faster querying. Even when it's not faster always, I hope you will know why and the whole story behind. Thank you.